So we 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 talking about uh, uh, you know registration, and what we are saying here is that the uh, fiducial registration is carried out automatically by Navident. When it's carried out automatically, the only things it probes it's to verify that he has done a good job. But because it's done, it's done, the job has been done automatically, it's always good. But if it okay. doesn't succeed in uh, doing the registration automatically, then he probes you to do it uh, manually. And it's the exercise that we've seen uh, before. The question, is, the question is that if it probes you to do it manually, you should always ask why. Because it might be possible that the CD that you are uh, uploading uh, is not a good one because of uh, the patient has proved, because of, for example, the fiducial were dislodged while scanning and therefore they do not lie on the same plane but they but they lie you know transversely on uh, on different planes and that's the reason why that you cannot match the fiducial with the daikon files so mm -hmm. you should always pay care pay attention uh, uh, to the reason why you cannot uh, do it automatically trying to be critical in the in the city data and trying to really assess why. Otherwise, it might be possible, you know, that uh, that's something uh, uh, you, 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 you might uh, elicit some errors that uh, can go uh, through uh, the, the, plan the planning stage. So, my suggestion, my suggestion is to be confident that everything uh, is fine if the whole process is carried out automatically, but if not, then you need to start to be quite critical and trying to understand why Navident couldn't manage to do it automatically. So that's my advice. Are okay, there... we, should, we, should, we should question that, yes. right? Exactly, exactly. Uh, uh, when it doesn't do the registration properly, Luca, uh, would it pop out a warning or what would it, what, what would it say? The only probes is uh, I cannot do it automatically. You should do it manually. So that's that's okay. the probes. When it probes you to okay. do it manually, it shows that uh, it cannot do it automatically. So okay. that's that's a sign. That's a tip for you that they cannot carry it out automatically the registration. Okay. So, okay. when the registration is done automatically, as much as we, we've done with this case, you will see that when you hit verified on the automatic registration, you will get these five quadrants. You will get on the top left a 3D picture, on the top right a panorex, then the actual images you know, then uh, you do have a, a coronal and a sagittal image. So, you get these pictures for one reason, because of the software uh, has carried out automatically the panoramic curve, which you see in this green, uh, sorry, in this uh, blue, pale blue line. You see this pale okay. blue line? On the, yeah, we do. on the left, bottom left. This is the curve, the panoramic curve. And because of uh, this curve has been drawn automatically, you can see these other two quadrants, which are derived from the curve. Okay. And so ideally, when you upload uh, the DICOM file, the data set, you will go quite rapidly into this position when you see the five quadrants. You do have a chance to re-register or register manually 
and you do have a chance also to redraw the curve. Okay. But again, if it does it automatically, I would suggest leave it as it is. But also in uh, in the curve drawing, you can redraw the curve. You see here, you do have uh, uh, basically uh, this. When you when you hit the redraw curve, you uh, basically get the actual image, and it shows the the drawing that uh, the the software has done on your behalf. Okay, and uh, and uh, and therefore, uh, when you eventually want to move, you can click on one point, and you can move it. Yeah. You see, you can move it. Okay. How are we supposed to uh, draw a healthy curve? Say again. How are we supposed to draw a healthy healthy curve? You know, which works. Yes, the curve. Should be fine. Yes. How are you going to understand it? Yeah, okay, I explain you. The yes, the curve is exactly the one that uh, he has drawn for you. Because it gets into the spongiosa just in the middle of a mandible. You see? Okay, yeah. So you, you shouldn't have uh, a curve like this. You know, on the edge. Okay, yeah. You should have, you should have exactly the curve that he drew, which is in the middle of the two cortical sides of the multiple. Okay. So either you change the curve, or again. You just done. I mean, it's uh, it's basically uh, already projected to you, and it's exactly the one that uh, you think it's it's uh, it's appropriate, you know, uh, and it's the one that uh, he has drawn uh, on your behalf. So registration and curve drawing is done automatically, and my suggestion is do not mess with them. Let Navigator okay. do the job for you. Because if he does what if, a good what, job. What if we draw a wrong curve? How are we going to delete it, for example? You go here and uh, basically you can uh, uh, you, you can you can uh, you, you basically you can draw a, another curve and you can use uh, a, a different curve than uh, the one that uh, you're currently using. But but again, my suggestion is that uh, do not draw. Do not, I mean, if it does it automatically, it leave it up to the navigant. If it doesn't do it, but it always can do a, dra a curve drawing. It navigant can always draw a curve. Leave it up to navigant. There is one okay. thing that Navident doesn't do, which is a drawing nerve canals. Nerve canals are not drawn by, uh, basically, by uh, Navident. Never. And there is one reason why uh, there is a never a nerve canal drawn by Navident, because the nerve canal has legal uh, implications. You, okay. as a surgeon, you need to be responsible for drawing the canal and therefore identify the limit underneath, you know, an implant cannot be placed. And therefore, you will always need to draw a canal. Navident doesn't do it for you and therefore we will see together how to draw a nerve canal okay so basically what you can do you when you hit draw nerve canal you get into this 
interface. Okay, you see the 3D picture, you see the sagittal picture, and you see a panorex. Okay, so that's that's the pictures. Wait, wait a second, look, look. Okay, we are trying we are trying to do the same thing also in our uh, computer, you know. Okay. What you're doing. Excellent. So it's a, it's a little slow now. I don't know why. We, we got into this image, the 3D image, but we cannot get out. I don't know. Okay, yeah. You can hit the 3D image here. There's an icon there that you can hit. It's okay. Okay. How, how do we change the position of the 3D image? For example, how, we want to just push it up. For example, here. Yeah. You see the, the function here on the left, one is a cross, yeah. you hit it, you can push it up, push it down, push it on the right, push it on the left. We, could, we couldn't hear you, look at So, you see the cross shape okay, yeah. icon? Okay, yeah, I understand. We see. You click and you keep clicking, and then you move mouse yeah. to the right or on the left. Then the mandible will move. Okay, yeah, we see that. Okay. So you can also see here a magnifying lens. Lens. You see here a lens here. If you click on the lens and you move the mouse up or down. A bigger, a bigger or smaller picture. Okay, I understand. If you see here, you see there's a S shape symbol. If you click it, then you move it. You can increase the density of the bone. Okay, yeah. And there's a last icon on the bottom. If you click it and you keep moving, you can open up the anatomy at the Okay, so that's that's the function on the 3D. And you see here mm -hmm. on the right the same icons that we seen before. You can have a picture from beneath, you can have a picture from one side, you can move it on the Fixed angles, or you can just click it on on front. So there are shortcuts to get you wherever you want in terms of a picture 3D. You can do the same on the left. You see the icons on the left, on the right quadrant, top right. There's a magnifying lens, S shape. And you see same information also on the bottom quadrant with the exception of uh, a toggle where you can uh, you can uh, add or, or uh, hide text. If I toggle it, I can hide the text. If I hit it, it shows me the, the test. Okay. Well, hang on, hang, hang on just a second. Niye açılmıyor drone orkan abi? Bu imajlar niye çıkmıyor? Bu devam ederken olmuyor mu işte? Okay. Yeah, okay. We we are trying to. Open up, up another data because I think this is tore up somehow. Okay, but listen here. Here on the on the control panel on the left. Let's focus on that. It's okay, yeah. Draw nerve canals. Brush size. Yeah. Brush size. And brush size. Uh, one, one, one question, Luca. The, the, the draw nerve canal option is not uh, act, active in our computer. Why? Because uh, because you haven't uploaded a case. 
We we have uploaded the oh, case. Maybe we it's like Simla is not demandable. Okay, mandibular mandibular depression. TV black. If you upload the TV black. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. Now we have it. Okay, good. So let's focus uh, because I, I would suggest the following, uh, Ali. I'm registering this uh, go to meeting session. So I will we transfer to you and your colleagues uh, the registration so you can see it as many times as you want. So my suggestion, okay. you should first listen to me without playing with your laptop yet. First trying to understand okay. the logic behind. Then I will send you a WeTransfer file with the registration of the GoToMeeting conference. So you, All right. you can then go back to your laptop and try to do things yourself. But if you do it, okay. you half listen to me and half try to do it yourself, the risk is that you go nowhere, you're stranded. So trying to yeah. understand first the logic and then you will apply it later on. So okay, okay, look. Let's Let focus on the on the panel, the control panel on the left. He says draw nerve canals and he says brush size. The brush is exactly the icon that I'm showing you now. It's basically a circle which has a, a diameter which can can be changed. In this case the diameter is 3.50 millimeter but if I hit the below arrow it gets to 3 millimeter and 2.50 millimeter so the diameter is smaller. Why we are changing the diameter? Because not all canals have the same diameter and therefore you need to be quite uh, you know aware that the most difficult and most challenging part of a canal it's the above canal not the below canal so you need to contour always the above canal why is that because when you're gonna plan an implant if the implant it's going through the canal and you just highlight the, the lower part of the canal then you will, not, you will not get any warning from the system but if you had drawn the canal starting from the upper side then you would have received immediately a warning that you might jeopardize the canal so it is okay. It's important to understand that you can vary the diameter of the brush and the lower diameter it's 2.50 higher diameter might be you know 5 millimeter 550 you name it but the lower diameter it's 2.50 okay. minimum minimum okay so when I decided the, the canal and uh, I can decide it uh, by watching the canal, you see if, if I if I navigate the Panorex, I can gauge this canal. You see the canal is 2.50. The canal is 2.50. If I had chosen uh, five or six millimeters. That would be that would have been awkward, but by navigating, I can easily see the canal thanks to the curve, uh, the panoramic curve that uh, Navident has drawn himself itself, and I can gauge the canal. I can understand it. That's a 2.50 canal, and therefore I reduce at 2.50. Then I go start new canal. You see, and the first thing I do, I identify the two foramina. You see the two holes here. You see the holes here. One, 
on the left and one on the right? Yeah. These two are foramina. So, saying that uh, from this point, the canal enters into the mandible. So, once I've okay. identified the foramina, okay, then I start clicking. One click. And when I do one click, immediately the other two quadrants are aligned to my clicking. Then I go navigating into the panorex and I identified the second portion of the canal and I do a clicking. You see, while I'm clicking, the 3D picture and the sagittal picture are, are following suit. I'm keep navigating on the panorex and I do another clicking. You see? And then another clicking. Taking care, as we said, the upper side more than the lower side as a benchmark. You see? I'm clicking. I'm yeah, you're clicking. Yeah, I'm clicking. While I'm at the end of the canal, I do double clicking. With a double clicking, I end my drawing. So my canal, you can see it, uh, you see, on the 3D, you see, my canal yeah. has been drawn on the portion which is interested for me, which is a dirential portion, you see? So that canal is done. I need to do the same on the left side, patient left side. So the first thing we said, I need to identify the foramina. You see? Okay. This is the foramina. Then I need to hit start new canal. Okay. And I need to, again, reduce the diameter at 2.50. And I hit, again, my first dot. Then I do my drawing. I go ahead until again I will double click to end my drawing. I do have now two canals, the left side and the right side. Then I hit done. Okay. When I hit done, here we go. We got basically the um, we got the two canals drawn on on the pictures okay so we said that drawing canals it's mandatory on the mandibles and mm -hmm. eventually um, and again it's it's up to the surgeon it's not our job so it's not a technical job it's a, a surgical job so it's up to them to draw the canals okay yeah. the procedures are exactly the same we've seen up to now but now we did contrary to uh, to the registration and to the panoramic curve doesn't take any responsibility in drawing canals okay okay good so so we've seen uh, you know the first three buttons here then we do we follow suit and we see add crown and we hit add crown we want to add the crown on the right side of the patient because on the left side there's already two crowns and two implants 
while on the right side we do have one plant, one implant. It's one implant uh, is missing. We want to place another implant, and we want to place also two crowns. Why should we add a crown? The reason why we want to add a crown is because of we want to find an axis. This is a, a surgical axis, which is a compatible with a, a prosthetic axis, which is a represented the, by the tooth itself. So we want to place teeth in order to be in a position to decide exactly how we want to place the implants in order to them, for them to be compatible with a aesthetic profile and a functional profile which is represented by the teeth. So we don't want to place on the right, so we say we want to place uh, so we want to place, let's say, a 45 crown. And when you, when you uh, basically uh, place a crown, it's basically, once you place the crown, it provides you with the three information on the, on the lower quadrants. First information, its alignment with the other teeth. Uh, the second information okay. is the size of the tooth. Okay. Okay. And therefore, you can uh, uh, fiddle with this uh, information. In this way, you do have, uh, you know, this circle, and you have these uh, squares. The circle needs to be uh, it and it gets white and it shows when it's white it shows that uh, it's activated so if when it's white and I click on the white and I keep clicking then I do have a chance to rotate the crown on one side okay. or on the other side and see how how, how, how can we delete the crown how can we? Delete the crown. One of the crowns, for example. Yes. If you want, if you want to delete this, how would you do it? You see here, there is a remove button. You see here? Okay. I hit remove. I go to the crown. And I it. So he has deleted the, the crown. You see? All right. And this is not only for crowns but also for implant. I delete the implant. You see? No crown, no implant. Okay. So if I want to start the process again, I go to add crown 45 yeah. and add crown 46. Okay. And I can work my way, you know, in a way that uh, I can uh, uh, adjust the tooth according to an aesthetic line which is represented by the other tooth. For example, in this case, this tooth is a little bit uh, not coherent with the other tooth, you see? Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to get it aligned with the other tooth. And this tooth is still a little bit cumbersome. So I want to squeeze it. I want to raise it. This one, I want to a little bit squeeze it, raise it. And then uh, I want to position it uh, in a way that it's uh, above, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the bone. Also this one. I want to place it in a position which is coherent with the other teeth. 
So that's that's a, in a in a in a manner in one sense as to you know be uh, you know uh, adjusted. Okay. So we adjust the crown according to the the other teeth which are adjacent adjacent to uh, to the crown that you place. So once okay, the, the crown are basically uh, placed and, uh, and adjusted, you are ready to choose the implant be beneath the crown. So you go first to shape. That's the yellow shape you hit. And you see that uh, there's no uh, uh, library, specific library of implants in Navident. Why is that? Why is implant has uh, a library of implants? when Navident has only shapes. Because as you know, right. Navident doesn't have uh, any guide. So you don't need to place a guide, a uh, implant through a guide. And therefore, it's completely different. Uh, since you're gonna, you're gonna work freehand, uh, it's completely different, the type of the brand of the implant. Because so Luca, it, do you have any plan to add the uh, implant library? To no, evidence of it. No, do you have any plan? No, it's because the, it doesn't add any value. It doesn't add. Okay. It doesn't add value because uh, it does does add value in C implant because uh, you need to choose according to the implant. You need to choose mm -hmm. the type of guide that you're gonna be using yeah. on the surgery. Yeah, that's okay. While okay. in this case, you do not use any guide. Therefore, you don't. Okay choose specific brand. So that allows you to basically decide other things besides the brand. The other thing that uh, you need to decide is the shape of your implant. Is it cylinder? Is it, you know, flat, pointed? Is it a pointed at the apex? Is it tapered? Is it, you know, that's that's the things that you want to decide. Let's say that you want to use um, a tapered implant. You know, you choose a tapered implant. Then you do an implant as much as you've done uh, before. And, and uh, basically, you go with uh, the implant and the position of the implant which is uh, 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 basically uh, uh, done on the panorex. While you place the implant on the panorex, image is shown on the, 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 on the quadrants below, the axial, the sagittal, and the coronal quadrants, in order to allow you to do the uh, fine tuning of the implant. And the fine tuning usually starts with a sagittal here. So you try to place the implant to uh, the, you know the shirt of uh, of bone, and, and therefore you 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 do the, you do this movement, placing your cursor in the middle of the implant, and then keep clicking yeah. and keeping clicking. So if you do this, you will see that the implant moves. You see? Yes. Uh, yeah. The basically um, the uh, you can you can see that uh, there are other qu uh, uh, squares here, and there's all okay. okay. And, and basically, uh, the circle here needs to get yellow in order to be activated. And you activate it by clicking on it uh, with the cursor. And if you keep clicking, okay. you will see that you can rotate your implant, moving uh, around the, you know, uh, the crucial side, while on the opposite. If you click the other circle, you move, moving around 
the article side. What you do with the squares? You see the squares here? You can see that uh, if you click on a square, it gets yellow. If you keep clicking, it's activated. And you can elongate the diameter of the implant. Look at here. You do have an 8 millimeter implant here. Or if you move on the direction, opposite direction, you do have a, a 2 millimeter diameter here, implant here. And if you click on the bottom, or on the top, let's say on the bottom, and you click on the square which gets yellow, which means activated, and you keep clicking, then you start, you know, elongating your implant. You see, you got 15, almost 14.5 millimeters long, or you get a 4 millimeter long. So when you decided uh, the position and uh, the length and width of your implant on the sagittal, you know, let's say that let's uh, get to a standard, most standard uh, implant, which is a four, a four millimeter by ten, to get to be more realistic, you know. Okay, so I do have a 4 by 10. So I position the implant on the sac. Then you see here the coronal part, and I see this root of the adjacent tooth, which is a, allows me eventually to rotate the implant to be more parallel to the adjacent tooth. Then I go to uh, the um, axial, and trying to see if my implant is just in uh, the, in, uh, in the uh, spongiosa and therefore it's considered to be, you know, uh, uh, completely contoured and surrounded by, by bone. Fine. Compared with uh, the tooth, which is, uh, the, you know, the uh, virtual tooth. For, to me, the implant is well placed, and therefore I go to add a second implant, you know, on the 46. Uh, uh, one question, Luca, uh, in between. Is it possible, is there an option in the software which is, uh, which would align the implant parallel to the teeth, for example, automatically? Do you have such an option, something like that? Uh, not parallel to the teeth, but one parallel to the other. You see, well, okay, I, place you also show that? I place an implant, a second implant, and here I put the implant okay. exactly parallel to the other. To the other. What I can do, I can measure parallelism. You see, if I double click on one icon, say this icon, it pops up. Then I do have uh, this function on the left, you see, mm -hmm. it allows me to gauge linearly or angularly the two implants, you see. So for example, I can measure the distance from this apex to this apex, or I can measure Okay. So these are these are functions that uh, allows you 
to take a measurement. But answering your question, Ali, no, there's no chance that we can have a, a, an implant parallel to a tooth. We do have implants parallel to other implants. Okay. Okay. So basically, we place the two implants. We can uh, uh, see them on. Uh, on uh, 3D as well. In all uh, different positions on the 3D. You see here, you see a second implant. Uh, you can see, you can see the implant and the tooth. Can have, you can see it frontally, so you, you can you can uh, analyze your implant from a 3D perspective. Okay, and that's it, guys. That's that's the planning with Navident. That's it. Okay. So it's easy as easy as it seems, uh, because uh, you see that uh, we've done. Uh, most of the things automatically, the registration and the, uh, the, the the panoramic curve. We only drew the nerve canal. Then we added uh, the crowns. We chose. We have chosen uh, the shape of the implant, and then we uh, we place the implant. So we are ready now to move on into the next and final stage, which is a dynamic navigation, dynamic surgery. Basically, if I now get closer to the micron tracker with the jaw tag and drill tag, the system acknowledges the tags and allows me allows me to start working uh, with uh, uh, with the uh, with the, the crosshair, which allows me to place the implant uh, dynamically. Okay, so this is uh, the end of. Uh, the planning session. Do you have any questions with that regard? Yes, I look I have. Go ahead. Yes. So what are the ch challenges you have faced with the software when you were working with doctors? So no, no challenge. Did you have because uh, this is the software uh, uh, it's much easier to any yes. other planning software. So planning, uh, it's not a burden, it's not a hurdle for surgeons, because it's pretty straightforward. So even people who are around 60s, in their 60s, who are not familiar with uh, uh, digital software, find Navident quite at ease. Reason why? Planning, it's straightforward. So planning is not a challenge per se. The challenge is when you upload the data set. Because uh, the most critical part of the old protocol is Navistent and DICOM uploading. Because uh, if the Navistent is not manufactured properly or if the patient moved during scanning, that's something which might you know jeopardize the, the protocol. But planning per se, it's easy and straightforward. So the most of your attention should be on uh, allowing surgeons to manufacture a proper navi stent according to the protocol and being assured that the patient has been scanned properly. In other words, yes. they, they, you know, the requisite of uh, of the scanning are are chosen uh, according to the uh, you know the requirements. Point forty max. We said. Then we said uh, uh, FOV, which is a minimum of four by four. Uh, we said that uh, can be used either a cone beam or a CT and the patient should not move and the patient should be scanned 
with the two jaws opened. They do not, it doesn't need to bite. The two jaws need to stay open. Why? How? Eventually with a cotton roll, which allows, you know, the patient to adjust on the cotton roll and not bite and overbite the denture. So that's, that's the, the most important. But planning, it's a piece of cake. You've seen it. Piece of cake. Yeah. Big deal. Yes. Yes, it is. How about placing the patient in the CBCT? Uh, how, how, are we supposed, how are we supposed to place the patient so that the CT image uh, that's, process the that's visuals as well? Uh, it, it's a very important uh, topic uh, to, do, to, to dwell. And let me just show you a picture here. Let me just show this picture. Can you see the picture? Yeah. So, first of all, it's important to understand that when you scan the patient, you do not need to take the tumble nail. You see this side? Yeah. You do not mm -hmm. need to take a scan from here to here. It will okay. eventually require very huge field of view to scan from here to the end of the arch. We are yep. not interested in getting the thumbnail. We are interested in getting the fiducials. But where the fiducial are into the CT marker? Let me show it to you. The fiducial is exactly the solid white. You see the two horns here? Yeah. Solid white is the fiducial. So you do not need to take the tumble nail nor this part. The only yes. thing that you need to capture into a CBCT is the solid part. This solid part. Okay. Okay. The fiducial. So, when you actually place the navi stent and the fiducial, you see the retainer it's a, 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 navi, a navi stent, it's made out of uh, different parts. One is the retainer, is the base plate, which usually is adjusted uh, on teeth. Then there is the arm, which is this one. Yep. Then there is uh, the CT marker. When the whole things are linked together, using a, a thumbnail, then we talk about navi stent. So what we see here is a navi stent. So when, why, when the patient wears the navi stent, you need to remember that uh, the fiducial part needs to be captured, not all this part. Yes. Okay. So that's. Uh, that's so how are we? How are we going to make sure that the fiducials are captured? You need to establish a field of view which includes the fiducial. Okay. And when we talk about 4x4 four four being the minimum, we are not talking starting from here. We're talking about starting from here. Okay. So, for example, if you do have a 4x4, four four, you know, you usually end up using one side city marker. And the fiducial okay. needs to be positioned near the area where you're gonna perform the surgery. So okay. let's say that you are edentials on the left side, patient left side. You would use this fiducial. You will not use this one. Because the fiducial is on the right patient side, not in the left. Here you will use this if the dentals part 
is on the right. If the patient is totally edentulous, you need uh, the two horn, the two leg fiducial, the two leg CT marker. You see? Yeah. So the manufacturing of a navy stent is the critical part because that needs to be idiot proof while the patient uh, is going to wear it uh, while scanned and secondly when the patient gets scanned as much as we seen here let me just uh, go back to the picture of the patient you see the patient here has yeah. cotton rolls in order to have the two jaw open not okay. biting you see yes okay so, should, so the patient shouldn't bite it right <coughs> say it again the patient shouldn't bite it shouldn't right? but be aware that the patient gets tired if you just tell him uh, keep it open the masseteri the two muscles the jaw muscles get tensed and he gets tired so he needs yeah. to relax his muscles and how you can relax if you can bite softly cotton rolls and you can uh, you know get the muscles you know cooling down but if you are a tensed patient then the patient tends to move then the patient tends to dislocate the navy stent then the patient tends to, you know, do things which are not good for Navident. The patient should be at ease wearing a Navistent. Should be relaxed and should be capable to maintain a position for one minute, 60 seconds. If it's tense or, you know, uh, quite... Uh, under pressure, then you might risk to get a daiko, which is not the one that uh, suits you your needs. Okay, uh, Luca, we have one more question. On a case here in Istanbul, uh, we tried to we tried to do a case, but. Uh, I think we were uh, working on mandibular, right? Yes. And in the we manufactured the navy stand and everything. We got the CBC. The planning was done. And during the implementation of the implant, the doctor said that uh, when he tried to get into the uh, uh, on the bone, get into the bone, uh, the stream was upside down. It was showing upside down. It was showing like it was a maxilla instead of mandibula. Why, why would it do something like that? I explain you exactly the reason why. Okay. The reason why it's quite logical. Look at here. While performing a... Look at this picture. Yes. While performing a, a mandibular you get the inversion of the side. So you get the right side is exactly the right side of the patient and the left side is the left side of the patient. Okay. Mm -hmm. While working on the, on the maxilla, you get the inversion of the anatomy. You see? The picture here, it's inverted. The maxilla is shown from the occlusal side. Okay. So, if the patient, if the doctor has seen this picture, it's because uh, eventually the daikon file has been exported and saved as a maxilla, not, not as a mandibular. Okay. So basically, the software reads, ma reads, reads maxilla 
and inverse. Why? Because when you perform uh, dynamic navigation, you want to invert the picture because you want to see the occlusal side first and the apical side second. As much as you see okay. here, while working uh, on a mandibular, you have inverted the, the side. Usually, looking at uh, a panorex, you see R on this area, while R is on the other area. R is right, as much as uh, the patient is right. So, okay. the inversion is linked to the fact that uh, while reading uh, the Dicom files, Navident reads Maxilla and it shows you a picture as it were a Maxilla. Okay, and uh, how, how is it saved as Maxilla or Mandebla? Where, where is it saved during the CBCT? Yeah, I show you. If you go to data, you see mandibula, mandibula, maxilla. Mm -hmm. Mandibula, maxilla. So JV Black, it's a mandible, not maxilla. So if he, if he reads maxilla and it's mandible, he will show the maxilla. Okay. And when you, when you are in this situation, you can also hit this key. You see this key? It shows exactly the protocol which has been taken uh, for Navident. And you see here, mandible, mandible. You see mandible? Mm -hmm. It's a mecha. So the comb beam was a, a, was a Klameka CT. Uh, the patient name is uh, JV Black. You know, these are all data which have been captured on the CT, which is uh, the, which are read automatically by Navident. But you can also always retrieve the information either on the data set or hitting uh, this icon, which shows the CBCT. Do you have other questions? Ali? Yeah, we are here. Do you have uh, other questions? We are, we are seeing we have any. Okay, have so any. what I'll be doing, uh, I will end up uh, this go-to-meeting session.